The formula to remember is very simple. Accounting income, which is what you see on the financial statements, equals taxable income plus or minus temporary differences. Accounting income will then be adjusted to include permanent differences only. Taxable income, of course, includes both permanent and temporary differences. The worksheet, as we'll see in a second, is essentially a reconciliation between your net income before taxes on the income statement and the taxable income that you see on the tax return. Here's how it works. Start with three columns. Accounting income equals taxable income plus or minus temporary differences. And on the left-hand side, we're going to list a number of different things, starting with net income before taxes. And I have a few examples here of things which can be temporary or, timing, uh, temporary or permanent differences. If we start with net income before taxes, some examples of differences might be book depreciation and tax depreciation. That's called capital cost allowance for the Canadians in the audience, by the way. Warranty reserves, which is the amount that is actually uh, expensed in the financial statements for, uh, for warranty expense versus the warranty expense or costs that have actually been paid, which is the amount that is usually deductible for tax purposes, not the amount that was reserved on the financial statements. Fines and penalties. Once these items are all adjusted from our net income before taxes, we get taxable income, which we'll multiply by the tax rate to get our final numbers. So one line at a time. Starting with net income before taxes. Let's assume that that's $100. This is the amount of money, amount of income that is actually on your financial statements. It's after everything except the taxes, after extraordinary items and unusual stuff and all the rest. Everything is included in here. And you put that in the first two columns because each line balances according to our formula at the top. 100 equals 100. And now you go through the various adjustments, the various differences between taxable income and accounting income. For example, depreciation. On our books, we have taken $20 in depreciation. That much has been deducted already from the 100. It's already included in there. It's not allowable for tax purposes, so we simply add it back. Because it's a temporary difference, it goes in the right-hand column with the opposite sign. So the line balances 0 equals 20 minus 20. It's an add back because you must eliminate it from your accounting income in order to calculate your taxable income. It's not an allowable expense. Instead, the government is allowing you some other number. It could be calculated using the uh, MACRS system in the United States or capital cost allowance in Canada or whatever it might happen to be. Generally speaking, it's going to be higher than your book income because that's what governments do. So let's say it's 30. And here we go. Again, it's a timing difference. It will reverse itself when the assets get a little bit older. Usually, tax depreciation is on some sort of accelerated method. Uh, declining balance or sum of years digits or something similar to that. As far as warranties are concerned, again, the amount that was actually in the reserve for the period, the amount you've expensed, is not an allowable expense. It will be an allowable expense when the cash is paid. So we add that back. Let's just say that's $15. But the amount you actually did pay is the allowable deduction. So that comes off our income towards the calculation of taxable income. Let's just say that's 10 And finally, fines and penalties. These are permanent differences. They are not allowable at all. So we have to add them back to taxable income, but because they're not timing differences, they go on the other side. Permanent differences on the left, if you use this worksheet approach, timing differences or temporary differences on the right. So we add that back. Let's say that's also $10. That's a whopping great fine. I wonder what it was we did. Well, anyway, too late now. We paid it. Add them all up, and you get taxable income. And, of course, the equation at the top still balances. Your accounting income adjusted for, for permanent differences is 110. 
Your taxable income is only 105, and the temporary differences are 5. The temporary differences can be divided up, of course. 10 on your fixed assets, minus 5 on the warranty. If you have room, it's possible to keep track of these separately in separate columns. I didn't do that here, but you can easily see that that's uh, not difficult to do. Now let's multiply this bottom line by our tax rate. Let's assume it's 40%. That doesn't seem unreasonable. And you get bottom line 44, 42, and 2. What are these numbers? The 44 is your tax expense. That is what is actually going to show on the income statement for the year. The 42 is your tax actually payable. Even though your expense for the year is 44, because you have temporary differences, the government only wants $42 from you. That's the check that you are going to write to your friendly authorities. The difference of two goes into deferred or future taxes, 40% of the timing differences. You can break this up, of course. The deferred tax is 4 on your fixed assets and is minus 2 on your warranty. It's perfectly possible to break that up if you like. On the financial statements, by the way, that would be broken up and shown separately because this is going to be a liability and this is going to be an asset. The deferred tax liabilities, the, the deferred tax assets are shown separately on the financial statements, on the balance sheet, and can even be broken up between long-term and current depending on the nature of the asset or liability that underlies them. So this is going to be long-term for sure because it's capital assets. The warranty might be considered long-term or current depending on the nature of the warranty itself. The key to remember is the relationship at the top, accounting income equals taxable income plus or minus timing differences, and you can always reconcile your deferred tax balance because the total cumulative timing differences times the tax rate is always equal to your deferred tax balance, either individually or in total. I'll say that again. It's important. The total cumulative timing differences times the tax rate is the deferred tax balance. In this particular example, there's only one year showing. If this was the company's first year of operation, then the total timing differences would be five at this point and the deferred tax balance two. If this was a company's uh, 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 ongoing operations, there could very well be a deferred tax balance carried over from prior years as well as timing differences carried over from prior years. This number five is the amount of timing difference that has been added or subtracted to the cumulative total this year only. Okay, but the relationship always holds. Timing difference times tax rate equals deferred tax balance. The amount of the check you have to write, however, is not going to be equal to the tax expense. On the income statement, by the way, the tax expense will probably be split up and disclosed as 42 current and 2 deferred or future. But the total tax expense is 44.